In this video, we'll have practice writing quadratic functions in both vertex and standard form, and we'll translate between the two. We're asked to write the equation in standard form of each quadratic function that's graphed. And so recall that the standard form of a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. And a gives us some information about the curve. We call this the leading coefficient. It tells us how the curve opens. If a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. c, the constant term, will actually be our y-intercept when the function is written in standard form. So now we look at the graph that's shown in example A, and we notice that the curve definitely opens up, so A will be positive. And from my vertex, I've gone over 1, up 1 to get to the next two points, so I know that in standard form, my A is going to be 1, my H comma K is negative 1 comma 0, so I can just substitute those values in. This is the equation in vertex form. And I can simplify this. And if I wanted to write this particular equation in standard form now, which is the original direction, remember, was to write it in standard form, I can just square out this binomial. And so I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's the equation in standard form, for example, a. Now in example b, I can see that the curve opens up, and a is 1, and the vertex negative 1 comma negative 1, I can substitute in place of h and k. So my equation looks like this. And what I can do is square out the binomial and combine my constant terms. And so here is my equation in standard form. So I think you would agree that if you're given a graph, it's easiest to turn that into vertex form first and from there you can change it to standard form. So in the next example we have an equation which is in standard form and what we want to do is we want to get practice writing it in vertex form because that'll be the easiest way to graph a quadratic equation. And remember that vertex form looks like this. So in order to turn this standard form equation into vertex form, we're going to need to complete the square. And recall how we do that is we split apart the trinomial kind of like this. And what I want to do is take half of my linear coefficient and square it. So my linear coefficient is 4. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add 4. Now I have a perfect square trinomial. But I can't just add 4 to something. I have to compensate by undoing add 4. So I'm going to subtract 4. So now my first three terms, I can write that those terms as a perfect square binomial. And I can combine my constant terms. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So now I have my vertex, I can identify it, which is h comma k, so negative 2 comma negative 2, that's my vertex. My leading coefficient is going to be 1, and I know that this curve opens up. So I have the two pieces of information that I need, that the vertex is negative 2, negative 2, and I know that it opens up and I know that it's a usual width because the leading coefficient a is 1. So here's a coordinate plane and let's graph our vertex and because it opens up and a is 1 from this vertex I'm going to go over 1 up 1 
and then over 1 up 3. Now at this point notice I've hit the y axis and the y-intercept is 2 and this does make sense because in standard form I can see that my constant term is 2. So now I'll graph the point on the other side of the axis of symmetry and then from that last point I'll go over 1 and up 5 and I'll balance that off on the other side of the axis of symmetry. So my last step here is to take all these points and connect them with a smooth curve. There is my parabola that corresponds to y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2.